Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Light. Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome to The Covenant Light on Tuesday. Wherever you are, go ahead, send out these links to as many people as you can. You are a man on a mission. Send it to as many people as you can, then join me. Let's have a time in God's presence. Hallelujah. My beginning and my end, my present and my hope. In your presence I'll be in it. Hey. Yes, you are, yes, you are, you the son of himself, the one who is and who is to come. Even I no go velali a mess over, even lobo go vele my end. My tomorrow and my now. Rona ma seka dele emuno kome na tiene. You're the one who makes the holy of holy so holy. You're the secret place I know. You're the holy of holies. Uh, yes, you are, yes, you are uh, the son of himself. Uh, in you I live and move and have my bed. Uh, yes, you are, yes, you are the son of himself. In you I live and move. My, bed. Uh, my beginning and my end, oh, my present and tomorrow. In your presence, I will be and nowhere else. Uh, you're the one who makes the holy of holies so holy. Remoskele mani ade moga ele emenante na ena no kome na ni ali adi kizeve amani amve di kava vela emenante kaiovele sile mani aka me na diani diana mi na veli ovo koyore ariani adi ariani amani ano koba na ni amama yo. Selemana kumiani ni efile mo sila kaya ibire oh Jesus Hey my beginning and my end my present and tomorrow there's no where I'd be than your presence hey, You're the one who makes the holy of holy so holy You're the secret place I know the holy of holies hey, My beginning and my end oh, Amen and I hail him O Selah my there's nowhere I'd be than your presence. Oh, 
You're the one who makes the holy of holy solely. You're the secret place I know, the holy of holies. My beginning and my end, oh, my present and tomorrow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts. We ask for words and thoughts from heaven to flow freely through me to your people. We ask for these words and thoughts to continue to speak to us and bring us into fruit and manifestation. We ask that signs and wonders be done confirming your word in the lives of everyone who hears this. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Welcome to a new year. Welcome to a new day. Welcome to a new beginning. Welcome to a new dawn. God is giving us an opportunity for a fresh start, a realigning with his will, his plans, his purpose, and fresh grace. The Bible says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His faithfulness never comes to an end, but they are new every morning. So there's fresh grace, there's fresh love available for us as we begin this new year. Welcome to 2023. I celebrate all of you who are consistently joining in. And I encourage those of you who have joined in today as the beginning of a new year to continue. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. The power of anything lies in consistency. Be consistent. Be consistent. Hallelujah. Today, this whole month of January, we are focusing on supernatural help. Remember, God told us at the beginning of the year, towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year, God told us that it will be a year of enduring greatness. And he told us, gave us certain instructions. After embracing our calling to greatness, after accepting the fact that we are called to greatness, God said to us, start from the place of rest. Start from rest into work. Not walk into rest, but rest into work. Start there. Start by engaging supernatural help so that God is at work. The God part is running before you even begin to run. We're going to look at the scriptures. Then he told us to expand our mind and thinking. Then he told us to excel in the natural, to engage that spirit of excellence, even in natural things. And he told us to embrace leadership, develop our leadership, skills, and embrace opportunities to lead. So this month, now every month, we're going to focus on one of these things. We have embraced our calling to greatness all through December. We focused on that. And so this month, we are starting from that place of rest. In 2 Chronicles, which is our text today, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, from verse 11 to verse 16. Moreover, Uzziah had an army ready for battle, which entered combat by divisions according to the number of their muster, prepared by Jael, the scribe, and Maseiah, the official, under the direction of Hananiah, one of the king's officers. The total number of the heads of the households of valiant warriors was 2,600. Under their direction was an elite army of 307,500 who could wage war with great power to help the king against the enemy. Moreover, Uzziah prepared for all the army shields 
spears, helmets, body armor, bows, and sling stones. Now, these are amazing things. This will get you going. This will get you... You can do a lot with such a mighty army. And he did do a lot. But in verse 15, we see the underlying secret. The one that people don't see. The performance enhancer that was engaged in verse 15. In Jerusalem, he made engines of war invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners for the purpose of shooting arrows and great stones. Now watch this. Hence, his fame spread far. Remember? One of the seven covenants of greatness is that I will make your name great. Fame. He said, the Bible says, hence his fame spread afar. Now watch the underlying secret. For he was marvelously helped until he was strong. God didn't stop helping him when he became strong. That's not what that scripture means. God did not decide, I'm not going to help again. I'm just helping you till you are strong. No. He became, he, his fame was spread afar, afar because of the results he had. But underlining that result, the thing that was at the base, the performance enhancer, why he was able to get all these results was that he was marvelously helped. But the Bible says that help stopped when he became strong. Not that God wanted it to stop, but the reason is in the next verse. But when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly and he was unfaithful to the Lord his God. So all the while he had an army. If you read the verses before, I, you know, I encourage you to go back and start from verse 1. You know, all the people of Judah took Uzziah who was 16 years old and made him king in the place of his father Amaziah. He built Elot, restored it to Judah. Uh, 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 uh. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Je- Je- Jekiliah. He did right in the, in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah. That's praying. Who had understanding, true visions of God. He wanted to hear God. As long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. Now look at the things he accomplished. Now he went out and warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabne and the wall of Ashdod and he built cities in the air. Built cities. Gained victories. Built cities. Not houses. Cities. He built cities in the air of Ashdod and among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who lived in Gorbal and Meunite. The Ammonites also gave tribute to Zion. And his fame extended to the border of Egypt, for he became very strong. So the help from God did not stop because he became strong. But when he became strong, when he saw the results in the natural and stopped connecting those results with how he started, when he stopped connecting those results with the performance enhancer himself, God, when he stopped connecting those results directly to God's help, the Bible says he was marvelously helped. When he stopped connecting those results with, to God's help, the help stopped. But when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly and he was unfaithful to the Lord his God for he entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Can you? I hope you are getting this. He wanted to do the God part too. Instead of engaging God to do the God part, he he became so proud that he felt he was the A and the Z of his success. He was the beginning and the end of his success. Because he had a part. And that's the reality. We always have a part. We have to think mentally and expand our minds We have to have a spirit of excellence in everything we do so that it can be attractive. Men look on the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. But we have to deal with men. It's men that will come to purchase our goods. It's men that will come to marry us. Uh, 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 It's human beings. It's men that will come to help. It's men that will have to believe in what we are doing. 
and, and, and be part of it. And so men look on the outward appearance. So the outward, the natural has to be excellent. Not just the, the spiritual, which is not an outward appearance. Men look on the outward appearance. So we have to do, be diligent to, to, to do things excellently. He had to build rampants. He had to build things on the wall to fight and all of that. The natural side was excellent. We have a part to play, no doubt. He had to lead. Uzziah had to take leadership at 16 years old. Leadership was conferred on him and he had to embrace that opportunity and he had to develop as a leader and lead. But it's, it's very easy to begin to look at those leadership skills you've developed and begin to look at the level of excellence of what you are putting out there in the natural and look at the, the kind of connections you have made and, and how, how, how smart you are because you've expanded your thinking and now you're thinking on a scale most people around you are not even thinking. It's easy to look at that and begin to think that that is where it all begins. No, it begins with the engaging of supernatural help. He was marvelously helped. That was why all those things happened. He was marvelously helped so he could think big. He was marvelously helped. He could, he could develop his leadership. He was marvelously helped and he could excel in the natural. All of those things took their root from the help of God. They were the result of the help of God and now the results he saw that others saw were the results of those things. I hope you got that. So there are three things here now. There is the help of God which helped him to think big, which helped him to excel in the natural, build all those things, which helped him to lead. The help of God enabled him to lead, enabled him to excel in the natural, enabled him to think big and globally and, 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 and think as far as Egypt and all of that. Now, the results, the victories, the, the finances, the prosperity came not because of the help of God, but because of that thinking big. And excelling in the natural and leading. Because of those three things, he prospered. Because of those three things, he became famous. Because of those three things, he did amazingly well. But it was the help of God that helped him do those three things. And that's the challenge. Most of the time, we find ourselves breaking that chain somewhere. We have people who will ask God for help. But they are not asking God for help so that they can think globally. They are not asking God for help to excel in the natural. They are not asking God for help so that they can lead. They are asking God for help to give them the money. No. Your, that you are leading, thinking globally, excelling in the natural will bring the money. But God will help you do that one. God will help you do that which now brings about the thing you are asking God to do. So we have the people who we say, God, help me. Help me with money. Oh, God, help me with money. Then we have those who will say, oh, God, help me to, to win. Oh, God, help me to win all my battles. No, God will help you win your battles by helping you think strategically, helping you excel in the, in the kind of guns you are using for that battle, helping you excel in strategies for leadership, helping you think bigger than you are thinking right now, God will help you to do that in answer to your prayer for money, in answer for, to your prayer for victory and winning. And now those things will now help you get the money and be victorious and see greatness. And then we have those who have been helped by God to think globally and excel in the natural and lead. And then they cut off the God part. And they want to be the alpha and the omega of their victory. And they, they think to themselves, the God part was never, never necessary. 
the burning of incense appropriately and properly and at the appropriate time by the appropriate people in the temple. How does that connect with my victory? It is the wall and the, 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 the gadgets that we have gathered and the people that we have raised. That's how we gain our victory. So he stopped allowing what was feeding these things to function. And he began to try to do it all by himself. That's why this January, we are going to engage the supernatural. Oh, February, we're going to talk a lot about that, you know, the other things. And in March and, 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 and April, we're going to talk about that expansion of the mind. We're going to talk about excelling in the natural. We're going to talk about leadership and developing your leadership. But this January, it will be about engaging the supernatural. We are going to swallow the performance enhancing pill. And how are we going to do that? There are three areas that God has shown me from his word. Three areas that we need. It's not my opinion. It's not even a, a, a vision. Maybe God spoke to me outside of the Bible. No, God showed me in his word. So it is biblical. Three main areas that we engage supernatural help. One is in praying. Two is in believing. And three, it's in sowing. Praying, believing, and sowing. And this month of January, we are going to be doing all of them. We're going to be praying together. From the 4th, which is actually tomorrow, all the way to the 24th, 21 days of glory. We are going to be spending it in prayer. You're going to go about your business, but in the morning, we will have the devotion and your praying begins. You plan to speak in tongues as often as you can. All through the day. Go about your business. Go to work. But pray in the spirit. And then at 3 o'clock in the evening or in the afternoon. We will have another session where we pray. That will be 5 o'clock East African time. 3 o'clock Nigerian West African time. We will pray again. And we will have prayer sessions focused on prayer. While the morning devotion will be focused on teaching and a little bit of prayer, the, the, the one in the afternoon will be on prayer. We will encourage you to wait on the Lord. Fast. Stay away from food. Stay away from... Listen, child of God, you know whether you are proud by two things. Your ability to, to, to call on God. How serious you take the path where you engage God. And secondly, how grateful you are when you see victory towards God. You know if you are proud, if you are thinking it's all you, by your ability, how, how seriously you take prayer and, and believe in God and giving, those things that the, the world does not see, but you know that's your performance enhancer. How seriously you take them. You, will, you can always check. You can always know. As I'm saying it right now, how, how much are you, how seriously are you thinking of doing it? You can always know. This man went to tamper negatively with what was feeding his success. Because you see, that burning of incense in the temple is not known. The Egyptians didn't know about that. All the people who saw the results they didn't know the background, what was going on in the temple, what was going on in the, in the behind the scenes. And he got caught up as well with the results that he forgot that he was being fed by what was going on behind the scenes. He no longer took it seriously. When he first became king, it was a major issue for him. You need to go read about Uzziah. It was a major issue for him. He, he made sure everybody was doing what they were supposed to do in the, behind the scenes. So as we set off to pray, you have to ask yourself, am I taking this seriously? How am I taking the fasting exercise? It's a fast for the whole year. Glory be to God. 
What about believing? You know, we're going to be sending out afresh this year confessions and declarations of faith. And we're going to be teaching and teaching and teaching, bringing to a point of faith in the devotions on Sunday in the various churches. Bringing to a a point of faith and confidence in the greatness that God has called you into this year. So the teaching will be there and faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. And we're going, to, we're going to send out, there's going to be a lot of sending out of messages. Some I preach, some my own mentors preach, some by Kenneth Hagin, Creflo Dollar and all that. We're going to be pouring out messages out there in the various groups that you belong to. Your job will be to listen to them. Listen to them. During this period as you are fasting, listen to these messages. And then take those confessions, those declarations of faith. Because faith is in believing and saying. And then we're going to have the opportunity this month to give in a way we, ne- we don't give all through the remaining part of the year. January is an amazing year, period. It is when you set the direction. It's when you set things as they should go. You build momentum and you release things so there's direction, there's energy. Those are the two things you focus on in January. Get the right direction and launch heavily. Launch powerfully. And so you can go far in the right direction. And so in January, we, we pray more than we used to pray in other months. In January, we declare and confess the word in faith more than we do in the other months. In January, we give unusually. We give what we call the first fruits. And we're going to look at and, and teach and understand these things. Let me quickly show you scriptures. In 2 Chronicles that we are currently reading, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 17, I want you to see the different times the Bible says, rest because your God is working for you. I want you to see what happened that led to that. In, in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 17, the Bible says, you need not fight in this battle. Station yourselves. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. What was the reason why they had this instruction? Stand and see the salvation of the Lord. You've engaged God. Now stand and see his salvation. What did they do to engage God? Well, you see the verses before that. You see in verse uh, 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 verse 5. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of the Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? Basically, they prayed. So prayer unleashes rest. They prayed and engaged God and the prophecy came forth. You will not need to fight this one. You just stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Another place, the Bible said, in this place as well, if you continue that chapter verse 17, it says, do not fear or be dismayed. So that has to do with believing, refusing to fear. Believe. All right, but let's look at where that was the key. Exodus 14. Exodus 14 and verse 13. Another place the Bible says, stand still and see the salvation of God. It's Exodus 14 verse 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. What was the, what led to that? In this particular instance, It was the refusing and the refusal to fear. It was faith. It was believing God. The Egyptians were behind them. They were seeing the Egyptians. You need to understand how serious that will be if it was today. And you can literally see, let's say they're armed robbers. And you can see them going house to house, heading for your own house. And your house is next. 
and they are breaking into houses, slaughtering and stealing. And someone tells you, see those robbers you see, you will see them no more. All we need from you is to believe. Do not be afraid. So believe him. Bible says, he that believeth has entered into rest. Believing, Hebrews chapter 4, brings him to rest. And lastly, giving and sowing. Make sure that these things, you do them. Mark chapter 4 and verse 26. Oh, hallelujah. Feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. Oh, glele bron de gajide brea. Fekezo. Ele let creeno ombra gadis matelia nande gese. These things, share the Spirit. These things, share the Spirit, will be your wisdom in 2023. These things, said the Spirit, will be your wisdom in 2023 and will bring your amazement in 2023, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That was what I said in, in tongues. In, in Mark chapter 4, from verse 26, and he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed shall sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. Can you see that? The man planted seed. And it wasn't one seed. He planted seeds. And he went and slept and rose. He was detached from the activity of that seed. He went and slept and rose night and day. The seed sprouted and grew. He himself didn't know how. Why? For the earth yields crop by itself. You see, it it doesn't need you to help it yield crop. The earth yields crop by itself. Now look at where the man showed up again. First the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle. The man shows up again in reaping what has grown. You see, but the growing was not his business. The growing was not his business. But he was needed. Some people plant and say, well, I've given. I don't need to do anything. No, you need to do something. But whatever you need to do comes after the seed. As you are planning to have 50 billion come into your hands this year, are you planning the seed? You see, because if you are going to go and try and harvest when there is no seed, when you've not engaged that part that you rest in, that part that is your rest, where you are not involved, when if you have not if you have not started that part, then you are you are you are dealing a death blow to the plans for mega harvest. No, you plant the seed. We need to learn this balance. You need to engage the supernatural. You plant the seed. You give abundantly. You give abundantly, and then. You take your eyes off. Let that seed die. We're going to look at this tomorrow and the day after. And then, child of God, you focus on the reaping. You see, your business and business adventure that this year now becomes you reaping the seeds you have sown. The marriage this year becomes you reaping the seeds you've sown. The breakthroughs this year becomes you reaping the seeds you've sown. I, do you still need to work? Yes. But the work is a harvesting work. Trying to harvest when seeds have not been sown is an exercise in foolishness. Use this month as we launch out in rest to pray unusually. We're going to be doing that collectively. To believe and declare God's word unusually. We're going to be doing that collectively in those prayer sessions that we're going to be having. To give and sow unusually. We're going to be doing this as well. Father, we thank you. We honor and worship you. Thank you for the privilege to begin again. Another year. And thank you, Lord, for calling us into greatness. This month, I ask you, Father, Paliogo preto coromonde reboshtaragidia.
I want you to pray with me. And stand in faith with me as I pray right now. So your amen becomes your agreement with my prayer because I'm releasing my faith. And you release your faith at that amen. Believe it down. Father, you told us to pray for alignment and upliftment every time we gather. And so Father, I ask you to align us. I ask you to lift us. And then Father, in line with your guidance this month, Help us to pray effectively. The Bible says the Spirit helpeth our infirmity, but we don't know what to pray. Spirit of God, help us in this month to pray and cook 2023 effectively. That man who called for Jesus to come help him with his daughter that was sick and was dying and eventually died. You You told him, if you can believe all things are possible, and he said, Help my unbelief. So Father, today we are asking for help. Help our unbelief. That man was willing to believe that the daughter can be healed as long as she has not yet died. But the moment he heard that she had died, he didn't have faith for that one. He didn't have faith for resurrection from the dead. That was where his unbelief was. And Lord, I'm wondering right now where our various fears begin, where the unbelief is. That one that we think, you can do these other things, but this one, I don't see how this can change. Help help our unbelief in this month. And Father, the Bible says that you give seed to the soul and bread for food. So this month, as we commit to giving first fruits, We ask you for seed to sow and bread for food in Jesus' name. That you will take care of us and enable us to sow abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So it has begun. It has begun. Greatness. The journey into greatness has started in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful, wonderful day today. Remembering that you are loved by God and it is unconditional. Have a great day.